pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that I will strike the shepherds and the sheep will be scattered. That dark and cloudy day. I, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And, and I'd like to take for a thought this morning, I <laughs> will rescue you. I will rescue you. Not me, <laughs> but I will rescue you. And you know, it's one thing to be rescued by me, <laughs> but it's another thing to be rescued by I. Because <laughs> when I rescue you, <laughs> he meets you out on a restless sea, walks out on a tempest of a raging storm and says, peace. <laughs> when I rescue you. When I rescue you, he takes two fish and five barley loaves. And it doesn't matter how hungry you've been, he's going to feed 5,000 and still have 12 baskets left over. That's when I rescue you. When I rescue you. It doesn't matter how many doctors you see, how many co-pays you pay. When I rescue you, there's more medicine in the hem of his garment than CVS and Walgreens put up together, all together. When I rescue you, y'all going to help me? It's Sunday. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> when, when I rescue you. Maybe, maybe, maybe you hadn't got there yet, so we need five things to help you get there. Five things you need to know about the mission of Christ. Five things you need to know about the mission of Christ. When Christ gets on a mission, <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? When Christ gets on a mission, number one, his mission was fulfilled, was to fulfill the law of the prophets. Amen. That was his mission. Yes. His mission was to fulfill the law of the prophets. He said, I did not come to, to do away with the law, but I came that the law might be fulfilled. Yes, sir. That's his mission. Yes, sir. And, 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 if, and if the prophet said that I will rescue you, then he came to fulfill the promise. He came to fulfill the promise, the law of the prophet. Not to do away with the law, but to fulfill it. Number two, his mission was to help the poor and helpless. His, message, message, his mission was to help the poor and the helpless. And some of you say, like Reverend Lord said, you ain't even poor. You was poor because you couldn't even afford the OR. <laughs> But God <laughs> helped us. Amen. And the problem is that some of us got too many resources and we think we do it on our own and we forget that it's God. If it's nothing for the grace of God, there go. Ah. came to help the poor and the helpless. And you know, there's some things that happen in our lives that money can't fix. And you need the Lord. <laughs> you, you need the Lord. It, 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 it is what it is. You need the Lord. You need I to show up. <laughs> Number three, his mission was to bring hope and peace. His mission was to bring hope and peace. And I don't know about y'all, but the world we live in now, if it's one thing we need, it's some hope and peace. We, we need hope and peace. The Bible says, why do a man hope for that he sees? But if he 
Hope for that he sees not. Then doeth he with patience wait for it. Amen. Amen. He came to bring hope and peace. He is the Prince of Peace. Number four, his mission was to save the lost. His mission was to save the lost. And some of us, we, we, we got saved. We said, well, I'm no longer lost. <laughs> and so <laughs> this is where I was last week. at a new facility, and I'm walking around, and I knew exactly where I was going, but I didn't know how to get there. <laughs> All right, now. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. I knew exactly where I was going, but I just didn't know how to get there. And that's the way some of us are in life. We know exactly where we're going, but we don't know how to get there. Amen. And so, when, so I don't know if that makes you lost or not, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you're going. Every once in a while, we get off track and we have to get back on track. Every once in a while, we take a left turn when we should have taken a right turn, and we got to get back on track. He came to see and to save that which was lost. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Number five. His mission was to suffer and die for the sins of the world. His mission, he came. He got up out of his glory, put on flesh to die. He thought that being equal with God was nothing to hold on to and swap heaven for earth. Swap glory for gloom. Swap sanctified for sin. Y'all gonna help me in here? Died on the cross not for his sins, but for our sins. He who knew no sin died for all sin. I will rescue you. Thursday, a Pennsylvania woman was rescued after she had left multiple notes in various places. She had been held captive since May 1st by someone who she had been in a previous relationship with, and he said, if you leave, then I'm going to kill your family. And she decided to just hang on in there. Anybody ever hung on in there? And since May 1st, she has been held captive, sexually assaulted, beat up, battered, and torn since May 1st. But on Thursday, <laughs> after three notes, the first note that they found said, I am being held captive. Please rescue me. And if you don't find me, tell my family that I love them. That's the first note. Second note says, I have been held captive and here is where I am. Okay. And say so when the authorities got there, mm -hmm. the guy answered the door and told the authorities that she was on vacation. And she had been leaving these notes in the women's restroom at various places. And one, she left in a museum. They just live in life regularly. He's holding her captive. That's the way some of our lives. I, I don't, don't get ahead of my, I don't want to get ahead of my sermon. Let me tell you the story. And after she heard the authorities at the door, she still didn't say anything. And he whooshed them away. 
she decides to leave another note. And this note says, I am being held captive. I am not on vacation. <laughs> I am in the house. This time, they showed up with the SWAT team and went in there and got her out. Been held captive since May 1st. And she left notes in the women's restroom at multiple pace places on the East Coast. And finally, somebody found where she was. And she was rescued. And my first point this morning is that sometimes we find ourselves we are lost in plain sight. Sometimes we are lost in plain sight and it looks like everything in our lives is going well, but it's not going well. The enemy has us bound, the enemy has held us captive and we are lost in plain sight. Hearts are torn and, 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 and you, you know that your pockets are so empty you even spent the lip. <laughs> But nobody else knows because you are lost in plain sight. And you keep putting your clothes on every day, going to work, working hard as you can, trying to get through, trying to get by. And you're lost in plain sight because you don't know where to turn to. Lost in plain sight. People think you're free because you smiling and laughing. They don't know you're hurting on the inside. You trying to decide whether you need to get a divorce or just run away. Y'all going to help me in here? Lost in plain sight. Looking good on the outside, but hurting on the inside. Can't even sleep at night. Wonder where your child is and whether or not they are right. But nobody knows what you're going through because you're lost. You know you lost and I come to tell you today that God's been looking for you. I say you know you lost but God's been looking for you. God's been looking for you. Yeah. Amen. Unlike this Pennsylvania woman, mm -hmm. she left notes, but God has been leaving you notes. Y'all <laughs> yeah. hear what I'm saying? Yeah. God has been leaving you notes. For the lost, the note goes like this. Come unto me, all ye that labor and the heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's a note to the lost person. Amen. And there's some of us, again, we lost, and we know where we're going. We just didn't got out track. And, and, and our note says, though your sins be as scarlet, Amen. I will wash you white as snow. Come! Let us weave it together. Amen. Note to those that have healed us, say, God is married to the backslider. Come back home. Amen. Notes. Keep leaving notes. God is leaving us notes. God is trying to rescue the lost and the scattered. And God is leaving us notes everywhere. God is leaving us notes that says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. God's trying to get you to stop listening to bad information and turn to the word of God Amen. for the answers to your problems. Amen. God's trying to get you to turn off Dr. Phil and, 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 and Wendy Williams. <laughs> God wants you to 
to stop getting relationship advice from Michael Paisden and start getting relationship advice from Ephesians 5 and Colossians 3. Y'all going to help me in here? God is leaving you notes. Notes he's leaving to those who are unsaved for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God is leaving notes to saying, therefore we have been justified by faith, not by works. But by grace through faith have we been saved. God is leaving you notes. You ought to pick it up and read it every once in a while. I promise you it'll make your day go better. Just start your day with one of God's notes. And I promise you your day will get a whole lot better. Your mornings will be a whole lot brighter. If you just read one of God's notes. It's been a long week. I better go ahead and close. God wants to rescue you. And like I told you, I put the cart before the horse. I will rescue you. I, I will rescue you. And when I rescue you, <laughs> he doesn't just throw you a life preserver in hopes that you grab hold. When I rescue you, he gets down off of his lifeguard post, swim out in the water to meet you there. When I rescue you, I'm reminded of a night when Jesus' and disciples were on a boat and he came to them in the middle of the night and the storm was raging and he was walking on the water. And Peter said, Lord, if it's thee, bid me come to thee. And he said, come on, Peter. And Peter walked on water. He knew where he was going, but he looked at the waves and the wind. And the Bible says he began to sink. And when he began to sink, he did what somebody needs to do today. And he said, Lord, 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 save me. And Jesus didn't wait until he got a first drink of water. Jesus didn't wait till his arms started flapping. Jesus didn't wait till he sunk below his chest. Jesus reached out his hand, pulled Peter up out of the water, and Jesus didn't carry Peter back to the boat. Jesus and Peter walked back to the boat. Y'all hear what I'm saying? When I rescue you, when I rescue you, when I rescue you, he'll make everything all right. When I rescue you, he'll turn your dark nights and your cloudy days into sunshiny days. He's the bright and morning star. I say he's the great. He's the great. He's the great. I am. Let me tell you how I know. He sent Moses to rescue the children of Israel. Moses said, well, when I get there, who am I going to tell Pharaoh that sent me? He said, you tell Pharaoh that I am, I am, I am, I am, has sent me. That's in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, Jesus was talking to a woman at a well. And he told that woman, I am that I am. Talking to Mary after Lazarus had died. Said, I am the resurrection and the life. Say, I am the door that the sheep go in and out. I am the light of the world in dark places. I am. I am, I am, I am the good 
good shepherd and he will rescue you. I am the good shepherd and when I rescue you, I do what doctors can't do. When I rescue you, I do better than a home equity loan will do for you. When I rescue you, I rescue you. I am I am the Messiah hung out on Calvary's cross. When I am come to rescue you. They kill him on Friday but early early Sunday morning I am gets up from the grave. Isn't that good news? If you think that's good news, won't you say yeah? Yeah! 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 yeah. The good shepherd will rescue you. For the first 10 verses in that chapter, he admonishes the shepherds who have let the sheep that were scattered who left them alone. And I was convicted. I said, are you doing everything you're supposed to? Because it's a dark and cloudy day. Are you reaching out to the ones who are lost? They might know where they're going, but they've gotten off track. They got scattered. Have you, have you, have you done? I was, I was convicted. Because what he says in 11 and 12 is, is since you won't rescue the sheep, I will rescue my sheep. It's in the text. He said, you, you fussed at them for running off, but you never went back to go look for them. It's in the text. And since you won't do what you're supposed to, I, even I, will go find my sheep. And so I want to encourage somebody this morning that God is looking for you. God is looking for you. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear and open the door, I will come in and sup with you. Is that you today? Is that you? Is that you today? If it's you, won't you come? If that's you today, would you come? Is he knocking on the door of your heart today? If he is, don't wait till tomorrow. Won't you come? Just come today. Come right now to Christ. He's coming. He's calling out to you. He's nudging your heart now. There's one. Would you come? Is he calling? Is God knocking on your heart today? Won't you come? Come. Would you come today? We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to. We're not going to ask you where you've been. He'll give you. Would there be another? New life. Won't you come? Would there be another? God wants to rescue you. You, you say, but I'm saved. It, it still doesn't mean that you're not lost in plain sight. You can come. Would you come today? We offer, y'all say it one more time. We offer. Oh, my brother. 
We all fall. We all fall. Christ to you. Your step out of that pew today can be the first load of your burden that you just turn it loose. You can come today. Won't you come? Won't you come? God wants to release your burden. Won't you come? Come on! Don't hold it off. Tomorrow might be too late. Y'all sing one more time while I regroup. You know, you never know what people are going through till you get out of the way. And just let go and let God. And this altar is full, not because God hadn't been good, this altar is full because God has been good. Yeah. This altar is full with the majority of people who come to lay their burdens at the Lord's feet. And they've come for prayer, some for themselves, some having surgery, some who have been battling with various illnesses and sicknesses, some who just need the Lord to hold their hand. Some have tried all the doctors. Some have reached out. They tried everything, and now they know that there's nowhere else left but to turn to the hem of his garment. And then we have our dear sister, Sister Joanne, 
was common for church membership. And you know, there are times when you see people come in and out, and again, you ask yourself, did you put your hand on the sheet? I, I can't get complacent with some amens on Sunday morning. God has moved me to search for the sheep. And sometimes that means leaving the 99 to find the one. And I've been convicted this week, and I, and I just, I, I'm going to do better. But I'm grateful this morning, my sister, Amen. before God and these witnesses, have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior before today? She has. Amen. 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 She has. Here at Mount Zion, we don't vote on membership. We accept all of those who come. And the only reason why I ask you that question is because you can come by letter. You can come on profession of your faith. Or you can come for, as a candidate for baptism. But whatever way you come here at Mount Zion, we welcome you with open arms. And from this moment forward, you have every right and privilege of any member of Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, including our most senior member, Mother Lurley Robinson over there, who's somewhere between 90 and 100. Yeah. Now, I might give her a little more say-so than you <laughs> for her wisdom, but, but all jokes aside, we are honored to have you join this fellowship of believers. Amen. 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 Welcome to our family. We'll get your information. We'll be making contact with you. Anybody know what prayer can do? Would you bow your heads right where you are? Father, we bless your name. Father, we honor you today. We honor, for you, honor you for those that have come to this altar and for those that are in the pew. We honor you for your preached word. We honor you, Father God, for those that are at home listening via the internet. We pray, Father, that this message has not fallen on deaf ears, but it has moved on the hearts of many for a reason. And, Lord, we pray that you'll help us to help these that have come, Lord God, just offer words of prayer and encouragement. We'll send them a text message, a scripture sometime this week so that we can know, Father God, that they be encouraged that their church family has their back, no matter what the problem is. And though their problem may seem insignificant to somebody else, it's a burden in their household. And we thank you, Father, for everyone that have come with courage today to offer their prayers to you. Asking, Lord God, that you will lend ear to our supplications and grant according to your power and according to your will. Forgive our sins, Father, as we forgive those who sinned against us. And may we understand the message in our Sunday school that where reconciliation and justification are, repentance must be present. That we must turn from our ways and turn to your ways. Confess that our way has been the wrong way and that your way is the right way. And get back on track with you. Help us to restore broken relationships. Help, help us to first see, receive reconciliation in our relationship with you. And then reconciliation with our brothers and sisters here on earth. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for being wayward. Forgive us for being slowful and slack. Forgive us for letting other things get in the way of gospel preaching and ministry. And Lord, we ask that you'll separate us from self. And Lord God, let us be about kingdom business, doing kingdom work. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. And Lord, we love you. We pray, Father, for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. And Lord, we pray, Father, that we as a church would, would open arms, welcome our dear sister Joy. And Lord God, make her part of this flock. And when, wherever the sheep run, she run with her. Amen. We go over hills, we'll help her go over the hill. Yes. And we're scooting down the hill, we'll be there to hold her. Yes. Lord, use us as a beacon of light in this yes. community. Yes. If somebody's passing by, just come on in yes. and receive hope yes. and peace. Yes. Father, we bless you, we thank you. We love you and lift you up. Now unto him that is able to keep you from stumbling, able to present you faultless, able 
to do exceedingly abundantly but more than we could ever ask or think. Unto him be majesty, dominion, and power henceforth now throughout all generations, world without end. And all of God's children said amen. 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 Shake, throw your hand up at somebody and tell them you love them. God bless you.